September the 28th, 1937. The people of Berlin are preparing for a state visit from Italian dictator Benito Mussolini. Hitler is building a new military alliance in Europe. We do not intend in rearming Germany to create an instrument of military aggression. But on the contrary, exclusively for defense and the maintenance of peace. Hitler parades his new army in front of Mussolini. Accompanying the two dictators is Hitler's interpreter, Paul Schmidt. I had ample opportunity of observing the two of them. Hitler's voice was rough and often hoarse. Sometimes his eyes blazed. His laugh always had a flavor of sarcasm. There was an interesting ceremony with Mussolini appointing Hitler an honorary corporal in the fascist militia. Hitler has also signed a pact with Japan. With his new axis of power in place, he is ready to make his next move. March the 12th, 1938. Hitler announces the Nazi takeover of Austria. Born in Austria, Hitler has always dreamt of merging his homeland into a greater German Reich. Karl Tizian is a soldier in the Austrian army. We've been told German troops should not be met with any resistance. God save Austria. Everywhere there are people on the streets and swastika flags. Germany has apparently saved us from the communists. Now everyone is on the side of the winners. In the town of Dornbirn, 10,000 people celebrate in the renamed Adolf Hitler Square. I believe that it was God's will to send the boy from here into Germany, to raise him to be leader, to return his homeland to the Reich. For me, this is the proudest hour of my life. Within weeks, the Jews of Vienna are feeling the real impact of Austria's savior. Twenty-four-year-old Jewish student, Edith Hahn. The Nazis are putting up signs on Jewish shops, warning people not to buy there. Anybody who resists is beaten up killed or taken away to a concentration camp. Everyone around us has gone mad. They were born hating us, raised hating us, and now the veneer of civilization, which had protected us from their hatred, has been stripped away. High in the Bavarian Alps, at his mountain hideaway, Hitler is already planning his next conquest. The diary of Nazi propaganda chief, Josef Goebbels. Now comes Czechoslovakia. The Führer is wonderful, a true genius. He sits for hours over the map and broods. 
The Führer is pleased that Czechs are being so stubborn. All the more will they be torn to pieces one day. And they haven't the slightest idea what's going to happen. Poor fools. Hitler claims that ethnic Germans living in the Czechoslovak province of Sudetenland are being oppressed. German newspapers are full of fabricated stories of violence and rape. Reports of German troop movements convince the Western Allies, Britain and France, that this distant border dispute could lead to war. During the annual Nazi party rally, the news has announced that negotiations with the Czech government have broken down. When Hitler begins his closing speech, the whole world is listening. I demand the right of self-determination for the three and a half million Sudeten Germans. They themselves have a right to decide to which country they belong. I demand that the oppression of these Germans in Czechoslovakia ceases. Two weeks later, Czechoslovakia's fate is sealed when Hitler meets British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. The agreement signed last night is symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. I believe it is peace for our time. Hitler's troops are allowed to march into the Sudetenland without a shot being fired. I have made sacrifices, and I have shown great restraint. It is the last territorial demand I shall make. <laughs> 